Welcome into the Archives, where we dive into games long forgotten in our Steam libraries to find gems hidden within. You find yourself in a warm tavern filled with patrons of all sorts. Elves, half-orcs, humans, and even halflings. Your drink is full of this brown liquid that seems to only give a means to passing out, as it does not have any enjoyable flavor. The smell of alcohol is pungent in this crowded place. Only the smell of the oak burning inside the fireplace gives some sort of relief from its hold. The bright light illuminates a single figure sitting on a stool by the fire with a lute in his hand. They begin to strum lightly, their music quells the voices around. The bard begins to speak of a tale, a tale of heroes, heroes who get poisoned to death to only have a single member survive to carry the other seven bodies back to some money-grubbing priests who charge a damn fortune to fix anything. This is a bard's tale. One, two, and three. Let's see what this story has to offer. I was really excited to give Bard's Tale Trilogy Remaster a try. The idea of a fantasy party fighting monsters and mad wizards back in 1985 was put into a game was so cool to me, considering how D&D and things alike were considered satanic at the time. Also, the remaster is a very faithful remake of the entire trilogy, giving it a modern touch-up with the art, but keeping it the same exact style, just now with more pixels. Gameplay is relatively the same, with a few things to make the experience more enjoyable, and less tedious, such as shared inventory and auto-mapping. If you're a purist and want that original experience but don't want to go through an emulator, the remaster has a legacy mode to make it as close to the original in gameplay as possible. So overall, looks promising. Gameplay wise, it's very much the ye old kick down the door and slay the monsters feel to it. However, before we get into that, let's meet our brave heroes who will be going on this journey. Starting off the game, you have a choice in choosing the A team. No, not that one, this one, where it's a default party the game offers for those who just want to get right into the thick of it. Or you can make your own characters with individual races and classes. Bard's Tale, and I'm sure to no one's surprise, was inspired by much from D&D culture at the time. Example of this is in the character creation, as races are only able to play certain classes and being able to roll for stats. However, it does not inform you about the strength or the weaknesses of the classes in the character creation. So let's go ahead and discuss a very useful feature, a in-game manual and bestiary. This lovely little thing answers quite a bit of questions and issues you may have at the start. Yes, that means you have to study for a few minutes so you know what you're doing. It's very useful also to set your expectations on what classes will get as they level up, such as martial classes being simple but each having their own speciality, like the fighter being able to smack a lot more than the paladin, but the paladin can take more evil smacks than the fighter. Magic classes are so much simpler to understand once you can see all the potential spells they can learn. The game especially encourages multi-classing or class changing in later parts for magic casters, so it'd be a wise to plan out your levels. I very much made my own party of bumbling fool adventurers. So without further ado, I introduce Ted, the default human fighter, Tina, the loudmouth elven bard, Jeff, the preachy paladin, Regina, the tiny menace gnome, conjurer, Carl, the asshole, you know, the typical rogue of the party, and the token magician, Sylvie, the know-it-all. I took my glorious shitpost of a party and headed out to stop a rude wizard making everything too cold. Now, to get into the meat and potatoes of the game. God, I love potatoes. Overall, it's broken up into two pieces such as baked potatoes. You have exploration, where you move on a grid only being able to go cardinal directions, seeing the overworld and dungeons of Bard's Tale, where you can enter shops, houses, encounter beasties, and traps alike, finding hints and interesting locations to bring the plot forward. Then we have combat, which has a very interesting system I have not encountered before. When making your characters or using the A-team, you line them up on this list here. The first four slots are your melee frontline, and then your last four slots are used for everybody else that is protected from melee combat. Combat begins at the start of each round with a choice of fighting bravely or bravely run away away. Haunted us. When danger reared its ugly head, he bravely turned his tail. If you choose to run away, you have a percentage chance to run away, and on a failure, you are forced to fight. Just 
not as brave. Once you start fighting, you now go down your list of heroes and choose their actions such as attacking a group of monsters, defending, and etc. Once you have chosen all the actions of the heroes, the game goes through a text crawl of all the fighting basing it on the monsters and the heroes initiative scores. Once it's over, either you will be taken to the reward screen if you win, or start the round again with once more to fight bravely or run away. Small fun note about how the game adds a slight dynamic battlefield is the enemies can be further away, and your party has to use range attacks or move forward rather than doing actions to approach them. It's a simple trick, but again, it's fun to think about how games like these approached problems, such as adding a distance mechanic when they were limited with the equipment they had, and pioneered mechanics to give things we have today we take for granted. And did I have fun? Did I enjoy the classic hack and slash? Well, I did. At first, creating the characters and then exploring the streets of the town was fun, basically bumbling my way through like any good adventuring party. Then finding a wine cellar that leads to the sewers, teeming with baddies. It was fun. However, after an hour or so, I started to see the age of the game and the flaws begin to show. I will say it again, just in case, this is a very old game. So my review is based on someone who may try to enjoy it today, not whether or not this game was the bee's knees when it came out. I am glad of the existence of this trilogy, but I want to be fair to anyone who may be interested in giving it a good try. See, if you did not play these games growing up and not running off that nostalgia because you weren't even born when it came out, like me, it's cool to see how how games work and what things we take for granted nowadays. However, things become very clear. Excuse me a while, I go on a quick rant about random things of the game. Skip here if you want to skip this hot mess. Okay, we ready? Here we go. The combat is hugely repetitive and not in a good way. You can only level up if you leave the dungeon and talk to some hooded boys that go, Eh, yeah, alright, I guess it's okay for you to get stronger. If you focus your attacks on the scary threat but kill it with your first party member in that round, the rest of the party basically does nothing until the next round. And since all the actions happen at once, it doesn't automatically have your characters attempt to attack the next valid target. However, your opponents can. If your warrior has multi-attack, they only multi-attack a single target rather than killing multiple creatures with each attack if possible. Poison is a bloody nightmare from the sewers and is basically a death sentence for that character, unless you can somehow make it out in time before they die wasting healing spells. Sure, you could probably grind your casters to get a spell to help with it, but it takes so long and so much money that it is hard to earn at this stage of the game. The resurrections or healing you get from the temples get more and more expensive quickly as your characters level up, meaning if you dive down in the dungeon spending all your money getting your party prepped, then end up dying or getting way too injured, then you may be unable to keep playing with this party and have to start over. Speaking of healing, the only way to heal is by spells, no bandages or potions to help. So you have to use your magic caster's spell points. These spell points, by the way, you have very little of them, even if you put quite a bit of levels into your caster. They don't regenerate very fast or at all, depending. God, I just don't even want to get into spell points. The game basically requires you to have casters in your party, but you are very limited on spells. Even what I would consider basic cantrips, which would be equivalent to a basic attack of a magic caster costs a small amount of these points that can really add up if you want these guys to do consistent damage. Or they just sit there awkwardly because you don't want to waste such a valuable resource and get screwed over if you do. And well, I could honestly keep going on with all my issues. I have no problem with difficulty if it's done well. As I said, this is an old game with many features and quality of life fixes not being present as it was not a thing yet. The studio did add some quality of life fixes but not too much where it ruins the original gameplay. I am spoiled by the games I play nowadays. So personally, do I think the $15 price tag is worth it? For me, no. The magic was lost after one to two hours of playing. I gave it another four to try to win me over, but I just couldn't really enjoy the grind or have fun. Maybe if I pushed through, I would find more. I really wanted to enjoy it. It just seemed so cool. Alas, this tale was not for me. But like many stories, it might be something you could enjoy. I'd say get it on a sale if you're interested. And maybe this classic will speak to you. For a remaster, however, I will give mad props to the developers for staying true to the original with very few modern touches, but keeping it faithful. Again, I just want to reestate, if you're looking for that old style of gaming, this is a wonderful way to be introduced to it, just not for this guy. However, this is not where my story ends. 
For there is a fourth game that is very much different, it seems, from the first three. So, let's see if our heroes can find adventure in Bard's Tale 4. So until then, enjoy the archive.